Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, we're going to be doing uh, on the last word of Jesus uh, before he conquered death and he became victorious over sin. So it's found in uh, Luke chapter 23, verse 46. Can we all together read the verse? Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Okay, we're going to be dividing this verse into four segments. First is Father. This was Jesus' favorite title for God. It spoke of the intimate family relationship that existed from all eternity. His first word was, Father, forgive them. And his last word was, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. But in between, he had cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He called him my God and not Father. Because in that agonizing moment, the Father turned his back on the Son as Jesus bore the sin of the world. God forsaken by God. But no longer, because Jesus dies with the knowledge that the price has been fully paid, the cup emptied, the burden born, estrangement ended. Whatever happened in those three mysterious hours of darkness is now in the past. Jesus yields his life to the one he called Father. The second phrase is, into your hands, O oh, the touch of a father's hands. Into your hands speaks of safety. It's like father, uh, the son saying, I am safe in my father's hands. It also speaks of greeting. Like the father saying, welcome home, son. It speaks of love, daddy, father, it's so good to see you again. And it's, it speaks of approval. It's like the father saying to his son, I am so proud of you, my son. For 15 hours, Jesus has been in the hands of the wicked man. With the hands of the wicked man, they beat him. With their hands, they slapped him. With their hands, they abused him. With their hands, they crowned him with thorns. With their hands, they rip up his beard, and with their hands, they smash him black and blue. With the hands of this wicked man, they ripped his back until it was torn to bits. All that is behind him now. Wicked hands have done all they can do. Jesus now returns into his father's hands. And the third phrase is, I commit. I commit. This word means to deposit something valuable in a safe place. It is what you do when you take your will and your most valuable possessions and put them in a safe deposit box at the bank. And the last word is my spirit. By this phrase, Jesus meant his very life, his personal existence. Now that his physical life was over, Jesus commits himself into his father's hands for safe keeping. It's like Jesus saying, Father, I can no longer care for myself. I place myself in your good hands for safe keeping. The moment has come. Jesus is only seconds to live. All that he came to do has been accomplished. It is time to die. There are two things that happened at the very end of Jesus' life. First is, his physical sufferings reached their climax. The pain is now unbearable. Breathing is almost impossible. The crowd gathers around like vultures circling they pray. The friends of Jesus watch in horror as his life ebbs away. Death rattles in his throat. 
from somewhere down below, a fiendish evil howling. <coughs> the angels looked away. The Son of God is about to die. The second lesson from this is Jesus voluntarily gave up his life. He volunteered to give up his life. Jesus Christ was arrested. He was tried like a common criminal. He was beaten within an inch of his life. He suffered a terrible ordeal of crucifixion and died an agonizing death. Surely, his life was forcibly taken from him. According to Matthew chapter 27, verse 15, it tells us that at the moment of his death, Jesus dismissed his spirit. That is, he voluntarily yielded it up to the Father. His life was not taken from him against his will. When the time came, he gave up his life voluntarily. To the very end, the Son of God remained sovereign over the affairs of men. The death of Jesus is a model of how we, the faithful, the believers, face death. As believers, we are not afraid. We are not filled with remorse over wasted opportunities. We endure our portion with grace, knowing that a better day awaits on the other side of the great divide. If we suffer, we hold fast to the promises of God as our only hope. We do nothing to hasten the moment, but when it finally comes, when the death finally comes, we have the courage to face it, for we have committed ourselves completely into our Father's hands. And so, Jesus died like a child asleep in his Father's arms, exhausted, weary, having suffered the worst man to do, he finally yielded up his life and breathe his last breath. It was a quiet ending. It was a quiet ending. For Jesus, it was a graceful exit, a peaceful passing from the brutality of this world. Of all the fears that trouble our hearts, perhaps none is greater than the fear of death. Can you ask the person next to you, are you afraid to die? Do you fear death? All of our fears can be rolled up into this greatest fear. We are all afraid to die. We fear death because it is so final. We fear death because we are not sure what happens when we die. We fear death because it means leaving the world. We know for another world we know nothing about. We fear so many things in life like COVID-19, nuclear war, marital problems, financial collapse, international intrigue, the onset of old age. We fear growing old. But behind them all lurks the great unspoken fear of death. It is unspoken because we cannot speak of the things we truly fear. It becomes a taboo. They are too frightening for words. Death is a final enemy. Can we say together? Death is a final enemy. It is the end of one thing and the beginning of what? Therefore, he was afraid. Into the bridge steps, Jesus Christ, and said, He's saying to us, Fear not, for I have conquered death. Jesus is telling us to fear not, for I have conquered death. He was there. He died like, just like all men die. He experienced death. He came back to life to tell the story. 
No one else has ever done that. How mistaken we are about death. We think that we are going from the land of the living to the land of the dying. This is not so. Because we are going from the land of the dying to the land of the living. That is death. Jesus Christ has said it. And it is so. Death holds no fear for us Christians. We should not fear death. For when we die, we pass from this life into the hands of our Heavenly Father. And He will take care of us. This moment we're going to be meeting our Father. We will be in our Father's welcoming hands. So what happens when we die? Our body is buried six feet below the ground and our spirit goes to God. We pass into the personal presence of God. We pass from this life into the Father's hands. These things are true for us believers, for us followers of Jesus, because what happened to Jesus will one day happen to us. Where he leads, we will one day follow. We die, we die like all the rest of mankind. Can you tell your city they're gonna die? They're going to die. We are going to die. But we have a hope a hope that transcends the grave. A hope that transcends death. It is Jesus Christ. For the followers, for us believers of Jesus, death has lost its sting and the grave its victory. We have all conquered death through our Lord Jesus Christ. What makes a difference? It is Jesus Christ and nothing else. In Him and through Him, and because of Jesus, death has lost its fear for us. Like all men, we prefer to live as long as possible. How long are you planning to live? Sa gayong sa tabi mo, mabuhay ka hanggat gusto mo. But when the time comes, we will not shrink back in a spiritual death. We know one who has been there. And has come back to tell the story. He said, Jesus said, Fear not, I will be with you. For those who know Jesus' death is not the end, but the beginning of life. So we all pray. Our Father, we thank you for a hope that transcends this dying world. We live, we die, and through our Lord Jesus Christ, we pass into your loving hands. So, Father, teach us to live each day as if it were our last, because someday it will be true. We will face our death. In these quiet moments, we would like to recommit our lives to you, believing that you will be faithful to us in life and death, and in life to come. We pray these things in the name of Him. Who conquered death, our Lord and Savior Jesus.